It's really important that you start recognizing that your favorite guitar solos always have excellent pacing. And I think that goes for songs that have really fast aspects to the guitar solos um, and might even spill into that realm of shredding, so to speak. Um, but I think it's important to recognize that these players, your favorite players, uh, have great timing, um, are really familiar with where they're going. There usually aren't that many happy accidents that are taking place. There's a lot of intentional playing in all of these solos, um, whether it's, you know, Pink Floyd, who when they're playing live, they're kind of hammering those same solos, or somebody who's really improvisational, like Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's, it's all intentional, no matter what. So anyways, I think this is a helpful way, what I'm about to show you, uh, is a helpful way to kind of increase your cr creativity, enhance your soloing, because you're keeping yourself to one small shape, right? You're creating boundaries for yourself. And I think if you can, you know, live inside of those spaces, uh, when you're warming up, um, getting yourself going, if you kind of continue to do that regularly, it becomes a regular practice, and maybe you warm up with different shapes each day, um, you know, slowly over time, you'll be able to connect those. They will turn into these maybe uh, solos that cover more space, um, but I think it's helpful to get started and refine the technique by confining yourself. So we're taking a shape that I heavily associate with Buddy Guy. Now, I've seen Buddy Guy play several times, and uh, when I was younger, I noticed, oh man, this guy is staying in, in one location, and I thought that was so cool. I was like, nice trick, you know, let me, let me mess around with that. And basically, it's this little house. Um, so I'm gonna link a, um, a B Blues uh, backing track right up here. Um, so definitely check that out and uh, play this shape. You know, I almost like giving my students the opportunity to noodle, even though a lot of teachers say that that's not a great way to, you know, get better at, at uh, you know, playing guitar. I think if you keep yourself to certain boundaries, keep yourself in certain confines, it actually can really, really enhance your playing. So anyways, it's basically this little house and we're playing it in B. Maybe you already recognize, you know, a flavor like that, but we're starting with 11 on the G string, 10 on the B string, 12 on the B string, 10 on the high E string, 12 on the high E string. And if you wanted to, right, maybe you're a little bit, you know, closer to the beginner portion of your guitar journey, you don't have to put on the backing track. You don't have to put on a metronome, anything like that. Just getting more comfortable with seeing the shape, visualizing it. And just kind of messing around with, you know, how does that sound? Um, how does each note sound under my fingers? Um, because you just want to be comfortable with the shape. Remember, if you move this down two frets, so let's say here's our B, here's our B uh, seven chord. If you move that down two frets, you're in A, and you still have access to the same shape. Just move that shape down two frets. So you just want to be really comfortable with those shapes first and foremost, and really simple patterns like that. Who says you can't just hammer those few notes over and over? for you know, 10 minutes or so, and then move on to all your, you know, the other songs and solos you wanna learn. Um, but I do think this is a really great way to kind of have that, you know, mind-muscle connection, so to speak. Um, and uh, the things I want you to pay attention to, is that I would look at this personally as a bit of an extension to that really simple pentatonic shape a lot of us learn on the front end of our uh, guitar journey. So again, if this is my B7 chord, um, low E, so seven on the low E, nine on the A string, seven on the D string, eight on the G string, seven on the B string, seven on the E string. Right, that classic, you know, pentatonic shape that a lot of people will play over that. You can think of this, you know, this little house shape as this little extension to that shape. So, you know, as you're playing through this shape, don't, don't allow yourself to spill into that shape, but you can start here. You can think about sliding into this shape. So you can always work your slides slowly. Again, if you're playing with this backing track, this backing track, you know, is, is long enough where you can just treat it as your warm-up. Um, 
and then just move into your session. So you don't have to go too wild with your playing here. You actually want to get dialed in. So practice those slides. Maybe you don't even do those extra notes on the back end of the slide. Maybe you slide with your middle finger and then you move to your ring finger, right? You can get creative with this. I think that's an important aspect to practicing like this as well is, you know, um, enhancing your attachment to your expression through, through the guitar. Uh, if you're going to bend, I would keep it to the high E string. That's a place where you're more than welcome to linger as well, just practicing your bends on the high E string. So on the 10th fret and the 12th fret of the high E, just working on bending. You know, maybe creating a lick like that, you know, kind of a Stevie Ray Vaughan type of deal. And just holding that, maybe assessing each bend as you're playing it and getting really honest with yourself. You know, you can do that, you know, every few beats, big bend, how did it sound? Um, do you think you could have improved? Do you think you could have gotten a little cleaner with it? You know, get really honest. I think that's, again, I'm trying to come up with ways as I'm practicing to improve my skills. So you want to be honest about the areas where you can improve. Um, lastly, hammer-ons and pull-offs. So, it doesn't have to be very complicated. Uh, now I'm moving into another shape, but you see what I'm saying, you know, you can just... You can go in this kind of scalar, linear direction if you'd like to. Um, but that's a, that's a lot of ways in which you can really milk this small shape for everything that it's worth and still maintain this great sound. So if you're a little newer and maybe you show up to a jam, hey, if I just stick to this shape, I'm gonna sound pretty good. Or maybe you're an expert player and you're challenging yourself to say, hey, I'm gonna utilize this small shape and make it you know, incredible. Stevie Ray Vaughan does that in Texas Flood. This is a shape that he hammers in Texas Flood. So keep all that in mind. Um, of course, if you do find this helpful, you find this approach helpful, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, it's super appreciated. And uh, you know, uh, leave a comment if you want, you know, want to give us some ideas on uh, different exercises that you'd like to see or areas that you'd like to improve on the guitar, and we can try to you know, exercise it, um, so to speak. Anyways, have fun with this, uh, and we look forward to seeing you next time.